Let's see who will be the first to join this morning. Grace and peace to you all in Jesus' name. Good morning. Good morning. I'm waiting for the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ayo Vincent was the first today from here. <laughs> Atilala wrote good morning first. <laughs> Atilala wrote good morning first. Then there is, and then there's the rest. I'm the first to. Atilala wrote good morning first. The, the principle is first to say good morning now, not first to join. So on that principle, Antilola wrote good morning first. Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace. Auntie Ayo, when is your birthday? Ewa, when is your birthday? Is this period now? Is he 18th again? <laughs> Auntie Lola said, thank you. <laughs> Ewa, when is your birthday? Today is whose birthday? I knew I would beat Clint one day. <laughs> Saturday, hey, I figured it's around this, eh? Hey, and it's around this season. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got it. 18th, I got it. 18th. Glory to God. Second Thessalonians chapter number three is what we where we're reading this morning. Second Thessalonians chapter number three. I don't like arguing, but we all know the truth. <laughs> Just write good morning. Second Thessalonians chapter number three. Clean, they want you today with first joining in. Today is Aboywa and Jared's birthday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Glory to God. Good morning, Papa. Good morning, everyone. Looking fresh. I know, I know, I know. Actually, my real color. Amen, guys. <clears throat> Invite your friends, share the video, get them. People want to learn God's word. Um, get them to join. Get them to join in. Get them to good morning, everyone. Good morning to you, too. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to go straight right to the declaration. I have a long day today. Dun, 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 dun. That's it. Good morning. Glory to God. Okay, at the count of three, let us uh, make a declaration. One, two, three. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the redeemed of the Lord. All my sins are forgiven. I'm passionately loved by God. I'm powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I'm irrevocably blessed. I'm eternally forgiven. I'm the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Glory to God. Let's make the declaration one more time at the count of three. One, two, three, go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the redeemed of the Lord. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I'm the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. 
and grace is working for me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 We go straight to the word of God. Find your Bibles. We're reading one chapter today. And I hope this is helping you um, get used to Bible study, like staying with the word of God, learning God's word and reading God's word every morning. I hope this is helping you. Like I said, let's take advantage of this. I can't assure you that I'll have this time. Um, sometimes, glory to God. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter number 3. Second Thessalonians chapter number 3. I'm reading from verse 1 to 18. Second Thessalonians chapter number 3. From verse 1 to 18. Is what where I'm reading from this morning. It will bless you. It will bless you. So finally, brethren, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word in Jesus' name. As we read your word this morning, I am asking that you open up our eyes to see Jesus. Bless us with the meat of your word in the name of Jesus. Let there be transformation, healing. Let there be miracles, signs, and wonders as we see Jesus in the scriptures. I pray in Jesus' matchless name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Second Thessalonians 3 from verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us. It says, finally, brethren, pray for us. It says that the word of the Lord might run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you. Do you understand? Pray for us. That the word of God runs swiftly and is glorified just as it is with you. So Paul is asking, pray for us that the word of God we come swiftly. The word of God has to come swiftly um, just as it is, is with us and is with you. Verse 2 now says, and that we may be delivered. This is where we, I get, those of you who hear me pray this prayer, still sharing screen. Sorry, let me take it out. Yeah, uh, better. So you, those of you who, who who hear me pray, you hear me say this all the time. It says that we may be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. For not all have faith that we are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. Paul is praying. He said, pray for us that we are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. For not all have faith. The wicked and unreasonable men here, he's talking about, you see, uh, men who oppose the gospel. Men who oppose the gospel. Uh, those are the men, he says, be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. Verse 2 of Second Thessalonians chapter 3. That were delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. For not all have faith. For not all have faith. Not everyone believes the gospel. So there are people who oppose the gospel and they run the gospel down. It says we're delivered from wicked and what unreasonable men. I pray that God will rescue us from wicked and evil people who have not believed. Who, uh, people for not everyone believes the message. So... The people he's calling wicked and reasonable men is not even kidnappers. I mean, and it's people who fight the gospel. You are as wicked as a kidnapper. You are as wicked as those guys. You are as wicked as a as an abuser. Because Paul calls them wicked and reasonable men. Verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And I pray for everyone watching this morning that you are protected from wicked and unreasonable men and the faithfulness of God you would see because he would protect you and guard you. It says, but the Lord is faithful, verse 3, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. So he first says that you're delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. And he goes ahead to say, the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. That means he will establish you 
He will guard you from the evil one. Glory to God. So I'm praying this morning that you're not just established, you're protected. He would establish you and guard you from the evil one. He would establish you and guard you from the evil one. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, there's a lady here. God is saying, I'm giving you a window period to fix this, to fix that. He's giving you an opportunity to quickly fix something in your marriage, maybe in your business, maybe in church, or whatever it is. And God is saying, this window period is open for you to quickly fix it. If you do not fix it now, when it escalates and deteriorates, do not blame anybody. That's what I hear in my spirit. Uh, I feel like calling you out, yeah? Um, God is saying, I'm giving you a window period to fix this. Put your foot down on the things that you want in your marriage, in your relationship, in your business, in restructuring your life. I'm giving you an opportunity in this season. And you know that I'm talking to you. And God is saying, do it now. Do it now. You know what to do and you have the strength to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 4. And we have confidence. Yes, good. I'm established and protected. It's something you, 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 you can, you, you can, you can say over and over. And I'm established and protected in the name of Jesus. Can you, can you just say that over your life? I am established and protected. Say it one more time. I am established and protected. Somebody say that to yourself. I am established and I'm protected in the name of Jesus. I'm established and I'm protected. Verse 4. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. You see what he's saying? We have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you both that you do and will do the things we command you. Um, so Paul is saying, I'm going to command you to do something. There are people who don't want to be instructed. You're not qualified to lead. You're never going to lead in life. Your ability to take instructions and follow instructions um, shows whether you are, you'll be able to lead when you get that get get there to the place of authority. Every, local, every global leader started as a local follower. You have to be confident. We have to be confident and we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, but that you will do the things that we command you to do. Verse 5. Now, may the Lord direct your hearts in love into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Somebody say amen. Verse 6. But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the traditions which we receive, which you received from us. Can you see this? Can you see this? Can you see verse 6? Bible, New Testament. Bible, New Testament. But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. New Testament Bible. Don't encourage bad behavior. Let me read it in TPT and message, then I know we explain it to you. Beloved brothers and sisters, we instruct you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to stay away from believers who are unruly, who stray from all that we have taught you. Uh -huh. Okay. Are you seeing that? What does it mean to be disorderly here? I would explain to you, but I'm just showing you Bible. Stay away from believers who are unruly and who stray from all that we have taught you. And I will explain what unruly is here. I will, don't worry, I will explain it to you. The unruly believers here are lazy believers. Lazy believers. 
I'm, I'm sorry to say this, lazy believers don't want to work, rebellious, always looking for financial support. Lazy believers, they don't want to work, entitlement, rebellious, always looking for financial support. I read tip it. Let me read it in the message. You get it now. I'm going to do I, I'm glad that you guys are saying our orders backed up by the masters Jesus Christ are to refuse to have anything to do with those who among you who are lazy and refuse to walk the way we taught you. He's talking about lazy believers, rebellious believers, entitled believers, always looking for financial support. This is the Bible. This is, I'm talking Bible. They are lazy, unruly, rebellious, and well, guess what again? Entitled. Always looking for, not even look on, always looking for financial support. Let's say, let's see how it will look now. Verse 7. For you yourselves know, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be generous. It doesn't mean we shouldn't be kind. No, it's just talking about these ones are lazy, entitled, rebellious, always looking for financial support. The next verse explains it. Ayo. For you yourselves know how that you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you. What is the disorderly, what, what is the disorderliness? Watch this. Nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but we walked with labor and toil night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. Paul is saying, when I came to you, I was not asking you for money. I was hustling night and day so that I would not be a bother to you. Verse 8, not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves examples of how you should follow us. It's not this, he's saying not because I don't have authority to say, hey, give me this, take that, this, you know. But I should make myself example of how you should follow us. Are you seeing this? But I'm making myself example of how you should follow us. Now, let me tell you the truth. If I tell I am the Vincent, they have one car. Did I tell the Vincent, I need that car today? They are not going to think they're going to give it to me. Oh, Dickiness Nonny, she's going to send her new Mercedes Benz straight to my house. And I will drive it until I'm tired and return it back. But you know what, eh? Lean on me, not be press me die. Feel at home, not be break television. I'm not going to abuse it. I'm not going to just take that entitlement. So the day that I need it, it's going, it's going to come. To, I'm not going to. There's no, there's no body. I'm not going to abuse that. You get what I'm saying? Paul is saying it's not because I do not have the authority to make yourselves, but I'm, I'm making an example. You don't do that. Do you understand? Follow me. It not be chopped meat first. Come and eat. Not be grab meat first. You will calm down first now. That's not how you do that. If you don't know, you'll make you fry for eggs. Now, don't take advantage of people. You know, me not be press me down. I don't do that. Feel at home now. You carry television, begin fry for eggs. Don't do that. That's not how you do it. Not because we we do not have. Not because I do not have authority but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. That means I'm not doing that. And I have authority. That means you don't have the authority to do that. I have the authority to do that as the pastor. And I'm not doing it. Why do you want to do that to other believers? Why do you feel entitled? Why are you not disciplined? Why can't you sit down and learn? I'm teaching Bible here. I'm, like, I'm serious. If I ask for 
thickness, no need Mercedes Benz, IOS car. It will be in my house in 30 minutes. Straight up. But I have my own now, except there is a need for that. I'm not going to abuse it. So Paul is saying, it's not because I didn't have the authority to ask for, but I did not abuse it. So why are you just unruly? Stories, the Bible is complete. It's not confused at all. It's not confusing at all. See verse 10 now. Let's go. And it becomes clear. For because there are people who are just unruly in church. <laughs> they not pay my rent. They not do my this. They not do this. They not do this. We should be happy. No, 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 no. You cannot do that. And Nigerians love taking advantage of anything possible. Anything possible. Any, Paul is saying, if there's anybody who's entitled, I am entitled as your pastor. I'm entitled to these things. But I'm not taking advantage of it. Why are you taking advantage of a brother? Verse 10, for when... For even when we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone will not walk, he should not eat. He should not eat. It was a command. That means they had lazy people in this church who just came to church every Sunday morning. Just wait, also share rice. Also share rice. Rice will soon come. Rice. Next week again, I go to church. Hey, first timers, did they give them bag of rice? Tomorrow, next they go again. Paul is saying these people are unruly. Let me read TPT 7 to 10. Glory to God. For you know very well that you should order your lives after our example because we were not undisciplined when we were with you. We didn't sponge off you, but we worked hard night and day and provided our own food, lodging, and not being a burden to any of you. It wasn't because we don't have the right to be supported, but we wanted to provide you an example to follow. You see that? TPT. Verse 10. For we were with you. Sorry, for when we were with you, we instructed you with these words. Anyone who does not want to walk for a living should go what? Hungry. That's what it is. Bible. I'm talking Bible. By, I'm talking Bible. That's what the Bible is saying. I'm sorry, that's what just the... That's, I'm, and I'm reading Bible. I'm so, I love the Bible. Like, I really, really love the Bible. I'm, I'm going to do this in TPT. Uh, okay. Don't permit them to freeload on the rest. We showed you how to pull your weight when we were, we were with you. So get on with it. We didn't sit around on your hands expecting others to take care of us. In fact, we walked our fingers to the bone up half the night moonlighting so you wouldn't be burdened with taking care of us. It wasn't because we didn't have a right to your support. The freeloaders. We did. We simply wanted to provide an example of diligence, hoping it will prove contagious. So the people who say um, pastors should get a secular job, Paul was saying, I did it. Paul was doing this an, as an example to teach people because he already thought that he who labors in the world should be encouraged by the people who receive the word. You, you know what I'm talking about. Don't you remember the rule we have, we had when we lived with you? If you don't walk, don't eat. Paul is saying, yes, I've commanded you to take care of me. Bible principle. Just good culture that you, you take care of your pastor. Yeah, but guess what? I haven't taken advantage of that too with you. You get what I'm saying? As an, as an example, just to teach you. Just to teach you. Do you understand? Don't don't take advantage of people. Don't don't manipulate them. Do 
Lead by example. Lead by example. For we hear, now the reason it says that, let's see verse 11. Let's see verse 11. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not walking at all, but are busy bodies. Did you see that? Verse 11 now shows you the disorderliness, the people. Who, for we are here, that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not walking at all, but are busy bodies. That no, they don't want to walk. They just want to collect money, ATM. They've seen you as their, ah, this is my ATM card, let's go. But they are busy bodies. That are for They are busy bodies. TPT, let me see what TPT says about. Now we hear rumors that some of you are being lazy, neglecting to work, that these people are not busy, but busy bodies. See what I'm saying? Message. Let me see message in verse 11. I'm serious. Glory to God. Don't take advantage of it. And now we get reports that a bunch of lazy good for nothing are taking advantage of you. They are a bunch of lazy good for nothing are taking advantage of you. This must not be tolerated. We command them to get to work immediately. No excuses. No arguments. And end their own. See that? You know, you know, last time I was telling you that if you mind your business, you be in business. Who remembers? It's Thessalonians. No? If you mind your business. You will be in business. Paul has said, told them before, mind your business. They did not hear. You know, you can be talking small, small to people. They will not hear. So Paul came black and white. Ah, hey, you are badly behaved. So this one, Paul came shooting straight. No time. So, you remember I told them, mind your business. And I told you, if you mind your business, you'll be in business. Now, Paul just said, no, what? I'm not beating around the bush. I hear that there are some of you here. All you do is move from house to house, eat, disturb this brother, disturb that brother, disturb this. So, you have, you have created a racketing in church. Paul says, this must not be tolerated. You can't tolerate that stuff. 12. Now, those who are such, we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they walk in quietness and eat their own bread. <laughs> Paul, I think Paul is showing, throwing shades here. You can't even tell me otherwise. Paul is saying they should walk in quietness. That Keep quiet. Go and walk.
is it better it's not the earpods let me know um we can't hear you bobs one two three it's back let me know if you can hear me so somebody tried calling me i don't know why people try calling me in the morning <laughs> i'm uh, seen send the message ha huh. i must talk i must talk okay so verse 12 now those who are such we command and exhort through our lord jesus christ that they should walk in quietness and eat their own bread that means walk in quietness eat your own bread mind your business verse 13 but as for you brethren do not grow weary in doing good can you see the balance can you see the balance it says for but as for you brethren don't mind them don't be weary in what doing good can you see the balance can you see the balance walk quietly eat your own bread you know says as for you brethren do not grow weary in doing good if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person and do not keep co company with him that he may be ashamed. Huh. Well, I'm, I think I'm going to teach this even in workers meeting. Note that person. Do not keep company with him that he may be ashamed. Do you see that? That means mark that person, free him. Go get work. Elaborate. <laughs> I saw that coming. Elaborate. Let's just let's just sample TPT and go. You see what I mean? Glory to God. Take special note of anyone who won't obey what we have written and stay away from them so that they should be ashamed and get turned around. So is that give them space so that repentance metanoia can happen to them give them spaces and tbb is you don't encourage their laziness because if you encourage their laziness by being around them guess what will happen they'll think it's normal but we draw your support that some sense we enter one day and say you know what i need to walk it says take special note of that person Bring them to repentance. Don't encourage the laziness. What if we can help them get... Yes, you can help them get jobs. You can give them jobs. But mercy, he's talking about people that you have given jobs to, but they refuse to work. I know of a... People of God who help me judge this. I know of a brother, no job at all. I now got him a job of 250000 He said, that is not... That's not, um, that's, not, that's not encouraging enough for him, I was not encouraging enough for him. Ah, he's a graduate. Too. He has a master's. I'm like, hold this one first. You just finish NYSE. Your first job is 250K. I mean, if you've been working for 10 years, I can understand the... the um, somebody help me now. I can understand the... On the flip side, they think it's weakness. It's fine. That's your, that's your problem. Oh... As gracious as you would be, there will be people who will think you are wicked. Use a old body first, buy fuel, buy credit, buy something. You just finish school. And I'm like, this 250k, well, I ah, no, happy flow. I was expecting to pay a minimum 500, you know. I see, whether you have a master's. You or you just finish school. Hold this one first. Once you hold this one, you can be looking for other job, and you plan your NYC first salary. You are giving you two fifty k. See, by the time they remove that and everything, it will now be two hundred and twenty something. I don't know, you know, something, something. I'm like, are you okay? So the man was telling me, um, the guy I told you to come to my office. The guy I said to come to my office. I said, sorry, sir. And I started apologizing. Sorry, sir. Um, what are you talking about? 
So there are people who you will give job to, but every day people I just need like 30k, I just need like 20k to just just to I'm not going to give you. I'm not going to give you. See come, see comedian. Are you joking? Was how much are you joking? That then people just something for just something, just something to fear. So I'm like, huh. unique insurance was it not 50k that time? They would be 40,000 they were paying us after after school. Are you people joking? But so there are people like that, you give them job. Ah, people, I went there, man. People, it's not really befitting for me. Money is befitting. If it will bring money, it's legal. It will be befitting for you in Jesus' name. So, and you are coming to beg for money tomorrow. And you, I, 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 the Bible says, I showed him this scripture that time. Maybe that's why he is not my friend again. Like I say, the Bible, I read it to him. I think I even did MPC that time. Let me check. I think I, I read it to him in AMPC because he boy while too much. What verse is that one again? It's not verse 14. But if anyone in church refuses to obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and do not associate with him so that he may be ashamed. Bible. And I'm, I'm happy because I'm reading Bible. It's so sweet. It's so, it's so sweet to read the Bible. If anyone refuses to obey our clear command written in this letter, don't let him get by with it. Point out such a person and refuse to subsidize his freeloading. And to be that's the explanation. Refuse to subsidize his freeloading. The problem is you are subsidizing his freeloading. Maybe then he will think twice, but don't treat him as an enemy. Sit him down and talk about the problem as someone who cares. That means, Auntie Baby, don't give him money, give him advice. Are you seeing that? Don't give him money, give him what? Advice. Don't give him money, give him what? Advice. Maybe then he will think twice. Don't treat him as an enemy, sit him down. Talk about the problem as someone who cares. I refuse to subsidize your freeloading. Do you understand that? So let's do New King James Version. There are crazy people out there telling you. Yes, do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all in Jesus' name. The salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is a sign in every epistle. So I write, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Yeah, glory to God. So assist him with advice, then give him money to enter bus to church, not Uber, not Bolt. First half in like a G. The Bible is complete. He didn't say treat him as an enemy. Is is just emphasizing that this one, no, yeah, that's what happened. Um, yeah, okay, can you stay with your phone on my way to Portmont. I'll call you. Uh, people, please, we will not be proud. Send us a job. <laughs> well, if I see job opportunity, I throw it to my church first, all the time. I throw it to members in the church. Um. We, we need longer sessions. This session is not long enough. I thought this was long enough. It's 41 minutes talking to you this morning. Amen. Profound and yes, and seat. I pray for you this day. 
what I sense in my spirit is a multiplier's anointed in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, if you're holding the phone with one hand, can you open the other hand? If you can drop the phone and open both hands as I pray. Father, thank you. Upon your people this morning, I decree a multiplier's anointing. Anointing to multiply wealth. Anointing to multiply wealth is released to you and yours right now in the name of Jesus. I decree an anointing to multiply wealth in the name of Jesus. An anointing to multiply wealth in the name of No matter what you do, money multiplies in your hands in the name of Jesus. An anointing to multiply wealth. Wealth is multiplied for you in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that the anointing to multiply wealth is released to you right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of stagnancy. I rebuke the spirit of delay. I decree money multiplies in your hands in the name of Jesus. I release the breath of God. There's somebody, God is saying, I'm healing your hands. There's somebody here, God is saying, I am healing your hands. Your hands are healed right now in the name of Jesus. Your hands are healed right now in the name of Jesus. So that's the word of the Lord to you. I am healing your hands. I decree your hands are healed right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Your hands are healed. Anointed to multiply wealth. Your hands are healed. You enjoy wealth in the name of Jesus. In the name of everything that takes money out of your hand and just keeps stops taking money out of your hand, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Money multiplies in your hand and in your life in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, our Father, because it is done in Jesus' much less name. And everybody said, Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. I will see you tomorrow morning, hopefully. Saturday, I'm teaching LFC. If you're already in the class, you, I'll see you. Um, it's short. You can join the class now. It's too late. I'm teaching LFC on Saturday. I'll do LFC. is going to be a long class, 9 to 12 or 1. I want to do revision. I want to do proper teaching. I want to see if you can go through that this LFC uh, as quickly as possible. Um, I understand that people have to travel, so I want to do. I want to make LFC as as swift, so the turnover um, um, is better. Is better. Glory to God. Glory to God. I hope you appreciate this. I'll see you in Sunday morning. Keep me in your prayers. Two services, eight o'clock and ten o'clock. God is up to something and it has started already. Have a flourishing weekend ahead of you with great grace. Blessings.